for some. It's a very difficult topic to say uh, as such because uh, to accurately predict what will remain and what will go is uh, very thing. We don't know. So I asked the best people there who I had yesterday on the dinner table, and I made this presentation today morning itself because after I spoke to them, I took their inputs. I did have few of my own inputs, but I wanted to hear from everyone present there to understand what is there. And before I start, I actually want to ask this question to a few of you. Uh, uh, just one single question. What do you think should stay and what do you think should go away in trauma surgery? Anyone can volunteer. Dr. Pradeep, what do you think should stay and should go away? The, the, the new thing could, could be, uh, we can get into more biologics actually. More biologics. Anyone, what should go away? Anisha, what should go away from orthopedics? What is that you wait about orthopedics? See, necessity is mother of innovation. We heard from So, we need to know what is something that you hate. Infection. Infection. I think, yes, uh, it's coming from horses' mouths. I think one of the things that we all hate the most is failures. We know one life failures. I mean, infection is some, and especially if the failures are beyond your control, it's even more frustrating. So, we would want sir, the infection to go away. Okay. Can I add? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, you what to go. come? For example, I watched uh, uh, Dr. Trika's talk and I always worried about managing a large bone loss. So for 3D printed, I mean, if you can generate, of course, there's a lot of research happening. If we can generate a 3D printed bone to build that, that's it. That's why, uh, because when we are in major trauma centers, that's a big hassle. So managing long cortical defects or critical bone defect is something there. So two wish lists we have. We have infection, we have got uh, critical bone defect. Yes, Sangeet sir, what would you want to change? Three months with seven days. Wow, fast forward. I, I'm sure many expecting mothers will be expecting that also. <laughs> From nine months to nine weeks. <laughs> so yeah, so he want fast tracking of bone healing. Okay. So faster, higher, stronger without failures. Anyone else? I feel, I feel probably uh, biological glues should come in, wherein with a minimal invasive technique, you can uh, treat fractures and take care of them. Some something like biological glues. Uh, I don't know how much of work is going on in the world about that. That should change the whole person. Not been able to prove successful. Yes, yeah, sir. Tried it? Yeah, so, so I think that yes. is, if that thing comes in, you know, the the advances elixir of in life. Life. elixir of life. Okay, so I so get the whole it. implant system, so, maybe you know. Yeah. So our wish list is long, and I think it's very sophisticated. But I, I, to my surprise, and it was not on my list. The first thing that people felt is going to come in is this Ayushman Bharat. So I think as a trauma surgeon, that was the number one challenge to most people that they think that we will be insurance driven and we will be bound by the rates prescribed by insurance or government. And why is it important in a trauma surgery conference? Because it will dictate the way. I, I had not put it in my list until yesterday night when this issue was bought. And I promise that I will put it as my first slide because yes, it will impact all the aspects on how we take care of our patients, how we invest in research and how the market will dr drive what we choose for a particular patient. So yes, this is in, so both consensus and controversies, but I will say that it is a, it, it is perceived as a uh, unfair thing by most orthopedic surgeon. It is considered a privilege by a few. For a patient, it is the vice versa, but I think the truth is somewhere in between. I think it is an opportunity if you, one looks deep into it by expanding the horizons of care and by doing more number of stress, I think the innovation will progress. So I think this is going to stay here and because I had promised this to be my first slide, it's there on my list that this is certainly in. We will be governed by insurance, will be governed by the governments. Number two. My Okay. Okay. So yeah, technology always drives, so he's forced me out of the podium. So this will also come in, that you will be asked that they need to do some settings there. So of course, I think uh, 
One minute. Sir. Yeah. So technology will come in and it will keep being getting uh, troubles, and we'll need to troubleshoot intermittently with human advantage. So that is also being going to be there. So second thing is yes. How many of you here are generalists? Okay. So I personally think that it will go away. We'll have more sub-speciality approach, more focus and good at one thing. Our fellowship training will be mandatory. Do you have a pointer, please? Yes. I have a slight change. But at the same time, I must also sound a warning that it is a case of too close to a tree to lose sight of the forest. So the specialization has its own advantage and disadvantage. Many times I tell when I have asked, I say it's out of syllabus for me. And I don't know whether it is the right thing or the wrong thing, but it is going to come because people will expect the treating doctors to be more specialized, fellowship trained. So this is certainly in for all the people who are there. I think whether it's a good thing or bad thing can be debated. I think the generalist having at least a certain uh, uh, percentage of people as generalists is definitely a good thing, but I think it will go away and it will uh, change with time. And on the same thing, what will drive that change and how people think of choosing subspeciality will become much more uh, intuitive. So if you look, there are certain things in which people choose their specialities. For example, they find it whether intellectually stimulating, whether there are variety of cases, who they have worked with, where is the practice location, how is the marketability of a certain practice, whether there is a potential to join a private medical or a hospital employed practice model, financial compensation. So all of these are the reasons why per, a person particularly choose the speciality. And if you look at this, you will see that every speciality has a reason why per people choose. So the people who are undecided are undecided because they don't know where they will be practicing. For example, if there is uh, a spine, they will always go for whether it is marketable or not. So this is how it drives the change. Again. Coming to the other aspect is this debate is still there whether we'll be doing damage control or early total care. I think the ball is rolling back towards an early total care given that our understanding of ICU, our understanding of management of polytrauma patient is changing. Another thing that is going to be out, I think I was one of the fortunate people who had the era where we did X-rays and CAM. So I saw the transition happen from X-ray to CAM. But the reason I have put is that the traditional Siams will go away is because the modern Siams are already here. We have been fortunate that we have got certain Siams which are much better and those of you who do not know, these are the things to look for. That whether your Siam has got a CCD, CMOS, dynamic flat panel de detectors and now even the film sizes are 31 by 31. So this is a change that will immediately happen in next five years. But going five years and beyond, I think most of the traditional Siam will go and it will be a standard of care to have some kind of device in which you will have a reconstruction capabilities available to enable um, fixations of complex periarticular fracture fixations in real time CT mode. So I think sooner or later in a decade's time most CAMs at at least higher centers will be replaced by OAMs. We talked about 3D printed model. It is only for better understanding. We heard Dr. Bhavin today. So these are the things which will help us understand better. But what will really happen in this sphere is what Hitesh was asking is one, this 3D printed trajectory jigs will take over. This is something that we do here. We, we started doing five years back to print a percutaneous screws. We will have jigs that can be predetermined and put to the bone, which will define your screw size, your screw trajectory. And this can all be done on your own computer. This is what I have done on my own computer that I can define the trajectory real time playing on the software and print a jig to put this back in that trajectory in a particular angle after the reduction is achieved. So all this will come. You can change the screw sizes here. You can change the length. You can see all that is happening. So I think 3D printed jigs will definitely come in as we uh, see more and more. Of course, minimally invasive surgery, which is arthroscopic assisted surgeries, I think we'll see much more. This is definitely in where we'll know, ki, oh, this is how the fracture reduction look. So more or more fractures, especially the periarticular fracture will be arthroscopic assisted. We have seen that this uh, thing about compartment syndrome developing post scopy is a bit overhyped. So the best way to see an articular reduction is to actually see it. So I think the arthroscopic uh, assisted and minimally, minimally invasive surgeries will be norm. 
of course any future talk cannot be without technology so i think these are the three areas where technology assisted surgeries will help and we keep hearing about these words thrown at us artificial intelligence navigation robotic so people believe that artificial intelligence will answer it and this was a question that's being debated over last two days tanna sir is here he'll ask can the ai what should i do whether i should do pfn or blade blade what do you think the ai will answer what what do you think show of hands we had a we had two people debating about it what do you think if tanna sir ask the ai what will the ai answer blade plate yeah because tanna sir so eloquently told about blade plate how will ai know that tanna sir uh, will say blade plate will why will ai answer blade plate excellent i think the smartest person in the room he is i know that but i can tell you this because he can predict the future so ai will probably answer this it will not answer what you should do it will say the 10 meta analysis have shown that pfn have a marginally better outcome as compared to angle blade plate 95% of the world would do pfn for this case however given your past record sir given your past record and successful outcome with angle blade plate there is a good chance that you shall succeed in good outcome for the patient with this angle blade plate this is the answer that ai will give and this is what it should be baki aapki marzi so this is what the ai will do the people feel and that and if you look at this statement it is intel it is indeed an intelligent statement and this is what you want ki okay i know i know this is what will be done mere ko kya karna chahiye to aap ye karo kyunki aap ye karne wale to yahi ho theek hai so this is how the ai will answer now navigation robotics in arthroplasty definitely because a good commerce make for good innovation is way ahead in terms of adoption of the technology but i think sooner or later the navigation and robotics will enter trauma and it is a certainly a thing that you should learn especially people who are interested in doing complex pelvic acetabular fracture surgeries i think navigation is definitely an important armamentarium and slowly and yet steadily it will make inroads for even simple fractures it will start with the most complex fractures because that's so the whole thing about technology is to get close the gap so you will see the experienced people don't need the technology and the 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 people who are starting cannot do such complexes so it will shift the curve to getting people who are moderate do it well it may not make a difference to the other end of spectrum but it will ensure that people who have got moderate degree of skill and support of technology will be able to do it well that's where the technology comes in it will not make an idiot a superman nor will it will change a superman but it will make most people deliver a standard result that is what technology will do and that is what is going to happen of course we talked about implants and i think implants that we use will change lot of it will become 3d printed they will be patient specific again the wish list they'll have better strength they'll be lighter they'll perhaps be biologically active at the moment what we do when we to put an implant is to ensure biomechanics and entire biology is with the surgeon the implant has no role in biology so i think that will change the implant will become more biologically active they'll be more bio compatible and at certain stage they'll have they'll be smart implants that can be manipulated within once it's put in and already in joint sphere we are getting the polys which have got sensors which have got ability to understand the deforming forces so i'm sure that it will happen with trauma as well where the implant that has been actually implanted will can be manipulated in vivo an example i did this last week when we had a lot of discussion and i deliberately put this slide most people will think of this as a complex revision but again the role of 3d printed implant we use this 3d printed implant called as t mars in which the cup can be put in any version anything and if you look at what the x-ray post op x-ray is just a week 10 days back this would look almost you can pass out off as a normal um thr not a very complex revision unlike the uh, screen because the cup was a 3d printed cup which allows bone in growth it can be put it any version and you can then cement liner to get what you want so i think the 3d printed implants which have got better osseo integration will definitely come in of course i am a great fan of this combination i think most of the autograft will go away 
most of the vascularized fibula graft are seen maybe ki sir will go away and i think the future is bmp or any version of bmp bmp2 bmp11 bmp14 we don't know allograft plugs and cells in form of bone marrow aspirate i think the autografting although it's very close to my heart and i think heart of almost all orthopedic surgeon will be out because we'll know the ways to replicate it without additional morbidity what will not change some things will never change i think teamwork will never change we all are here and i think how we play individually as a team we are as good as the weakest link in our team so we'll all keep working as a teamwork the cardinal principle i still think that what ao gave 40 years and it has stood the set of time is good reduction stable fixation early mobilization and good biology i think these principles perhaps will not change in trauma surgery the ways and the means to achieve them may change but i think they will stand test of time for many centuries hopefully i think again the understanding of biology will not change i think if you get good osseo induction osseo conduction and um, osseo integration uh, growth factors i think that is something that will not change the understanding of biology i think i'll quote tanna sir here the other thing is the mantras of life will not change we will keep learning and we are never too old to change our mind we can always witness a miracle and we can see the change and this is again uh, yeah i think ha yeah la sir ha huh? again fall in love woh nahi bola sir some things are left unsaid it has to be assumed <laughs> no but it is true and love need not be the uh, only about making love it can be love in any kind so so i think yes you are never too old for that and i think the philosophy ikigai of life we discuss about it is having a good work life balance and enjoying what you do will always remain in vogue irrespective of what we are and what we do so thank you everyone for your attention